kind enough to join us after last night. Uh, the difference, uh, the mood pregame and postgame was what, Ernie? Well, you know what? Uh, if you're talking about the ballpark, it was, uh, there was a certain unease in my mind. In fact, Ron and I were talking, and looked like this, here, this was a nervous crowd at Wrigley. They were down 2 nothing. Uh, and then, as the intros take place, then things start happening. And then, you know, they start getting up. But, man, I tell you, when the other guy scores for it, uh, when they throw out the arm, you know, send the Grom out with the lead, to lose the lead, to come back, and then just that whole sequence of events with the uh, with the strikeout and the ball getting away, and there goes the lead, and uh, and then it starts raining, and then it was uh, uh, I don't know a certain funk set in at Wrigley last night in the in the late stages. When you when you're doing the, I mean, everybody understands a, a century of futility there, but is there part of you that? Roots for the Cubs, not not maybe not overtly, but maybe the story of the Cubs. Oh, sure. I think I think when uh, as the season develops, like we did a regular season game up here uh, against the Cardinals late in the season when guys were throwing at each other and that kind of thing, and these teams played in the in the Central. The teams play nineteen times, and so they're not going to bark off each other all year. But there's something that says, you know what, um, baseball is better uh, when the Cubs are in it because it just brings um, to the forefront uh, the history of this team and the certain you know, moments that have happened. And when they're relevant, I think it's good for baseball. And, and so, you know, you don't root for them, but you're happy because Joe Madden came in. And with Joe's style, it was a perfect fit with this young team. And so, yeah, I, again, you don't root, but you say, you know, this is this is a pretty good story that's happening right here. Let's see how. And uh, but right now, when you only get one fifty eight, it's not going to go real far. Also, it seems like every postseason there is a Daniel Murphy or Cody Ross or Gene Tennis or Mark Lemke. Why do you why do you think yeah. it is the guys certain guys get that opportunity? Yeah, you know, I don't know if anybody has an answer for that, Dan. And, and you know, I was living in Atlanta. Obviously, you brought up Lemmer, um, you know, where he hit over 400, and every time he came up, it looked like he was on base. But the Murphy thing is just this power is is amazing. Even Terry Collins last night after the game was at a loss. He's, I don't even know who this guy is. And 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 then it it works out where you're on that kind of a roll there, and then the ball finds you. Game. He makes the big play out there. His first, the third of them. I don't know. Just sometimes those baseball gods are kind of like smiling on you. And to see the to see the home runs that he was hitting against the quality of pitching he was hitting it off of, you know, with two off Kurt Lester, Marietta, I mean, and and then here comes, you know, last night. It, 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 you're just amazed. I mean, I, I think I think we all just kind of look at each other look, look like, what is it? So is there an answer? No, not at all. But it's, you know, you ride that wave as long as uh, as long as you can. Have fun tonight, Ernie. Uh, great, uh, great talk to you, and uh, we'll be watching. Dan, it is always a pleasure. Thank you much. And thank you. That's uh, Ernie Johnson, Jr. We apologize for uh, his uh, his phone kind of dropping out there a little bit.